Well, you know, I know it's going to take we all of us praying, uh, trusting God, because because the Lord said this in His Word that if if my people will humble themselves and seek my face and they would pray, then I would heal their land. God can heal this land even now, but with all the reports and and and, and all the negativity. There has really landed in the in, in, in upon the land a spirit of fear, uh, and it's not good. A spirit of fear does not come from God, and, and I mean it really can take you to different places. Uh, and so I believe God has given me a word pertaining to uh, how should we deal with this humongous spirit of fear that keeps circulating and jumping and moving around. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to try and, and give you the best that God's given me in that. Let us let us pray and, uh, and then we'll get right into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, we bless you, we glorify you, we worship you, we praise you. Father God, we just ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will you will have your way. Father God, we lift up every situation, all situations. And Father God, we just ask that you will intervene. We ask that you will help us. We ask that you will bless. We ask that you will encourage. Father God, let us. Let us not lose faith. Let us not lose our courage. Oh, Father God, bless bless those that are that are serving, that are that are having to face every day the dismay and the, and the challenges that are so much greater than man. Have mercy on those that are on the front line. Strengthen them and and be God inside of them because they are needed in this season, Father God. And then we're asking that you would touch the the doctors and the scientists and. And Father God, we're asking, we're asking for a remedy. We're asking that you will give us a cure for this in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, and we rebuke the spirit of fear. We know that fear is not of you. So we rebuke that. We curse it. We render it null and void in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke a spirit of suicide. Oh, God, in the old glory to God. We rebuke a spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. Oh, and we, we speak that we will live and we will not die, that we are healed and we are not sick. In the name of Jesus, Father, we rebuke that that that's, that that intimidation of sickness and that anticipation of sickness. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and Father God. We just give you the honor, and we give you the glory, we give the praise for the victory. We're asking God that you you will just encourage right now, and and then increase our faith so that we can openly rebuke our fear. And Father God, we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, as as you call this word to go forth, it shall go forth. And Father God, I yield to you. Holy Spirit, I yield to you that you might teach the word of God. And, uh, and, and, and I give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in advance. Let it be all of you and none of me. Uh, and bless your people. Open up ears so they might hear during this time your word, oh Father God. Open up hearts so they might receive and understand. Open up eyes so they might see your way. And Father God, we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Um, as I said that, you know, fear, fear is a spirit. And, and, and let me give you 2 Timothy 1 and 7. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, I want to get into this just a little bit because I think that God's given me some things that will be critical, that if you can hear them and it will bless your hearts, especially during this time. First of all, fear is a spirit. A, a spirit is, uh, but, but it's not of God. Fear is a spirit, but it's not of God. Uh, we don't get it from God. Spirits move like the wind. Spirits move like the wind. One minute you are, you are totally full of faith in God, then you can be in fear. Fear can come from nowhere. Now get this in your spirit. Fear is a tester of faith. Fear is a tester of faith. Ungodly, there's a reverence, there are two words that, that comes to mind. There is a reverence unto God, which is, which is, a, which is a fear. But then there is a spirit of fear that does not come from God. Uh, so we are, we are denouncing and rebuking the spirit of fear. Uh, we, we must keep, this is a thought I just gave you, fear is a test of faith. We must keep ourselves full of faith to defeat fear. Hear that. We must keep ourselves full of faith, godly faith, to defeat fear. When fear comes, we must remember or immediately find faith by proclaiming a promise of God, a finding a promise of God in his word. I, I got to do that again because I want you to really get that. When fear comes, now remember I tell you it's like a spirit. It comes from anywhere. It comes from everywhere. 
And, it, and it's, it's, a very real, it's a very real overwhelming presence, especially during a time like this. So when fear comes, we must, we must remember or immediately find faith by proclaiming a promise of God or finding a promise of God in the scriptures. If we can't proclaim it, if we don't know it at that moment, if it's not coming up, then we need to, we need to go and we need to find, we need to get in the scriptures and we need to find uh, 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 God's promises concerning fear. Now, now here, here's another thought. Faith in God takes the authority, get this now, faith in God takes the authority and the power out of the spirit of fear. Faith in God takes the, it takes the authority and it takes the power out of the spirit of fear. That's the only thing that can take the power and the authority out of, out of fear is faith in God. That is the only way fear can be defeated. It's the only way faith in God, meaning that I'm trusting God and his word is in me and I'm, I'm, I'm able to use, because the Bible said faith cometh by hearing. So out of my mouth, I must have an arsenal of God's word already in me, ready to speak to fear, ready to speak fear. I mean, with everything that's going on out here and all the challenges and you're looking for something good and then something bad comes up and you're, you're seeking to hear some, you know, recovery and people are doing fine and things are turning around. And then you, you get somebody that'll say something all off the wall. And so, so remember, when the more you get faith in God and the more you look for hope and the more you desire to experience the power of God, fear is looking for you. Fear is such a, searching for you. Fear is, a, fear is a spirit. Our faith, now this is, this, is, this is a thought. Faith in God takes the thoughts and the power out of the spirit of fear. I said that to you. That is the only way fear can be defeated. Fear, get this now, fear lingers. It lingers. It looks for a way in. It's a spirit, remember? So it lingers. It looks for a way in your life. It looks for a way in your psyche. Fear lingers if your faith is temporary. A lot of times we can get what's called temporary faith or a little bit of faith and, and, and we'll hear the word of God real quick and, and we don't meditate on it. We don't concentrate on it. And so fear lingers. It's waiting on an opportunity to get back in. Our faith must be established in God. It must be established to effectively fight the spirit of fear. Our faith must be established to effectively fight the spirit of fear. Our faith is established for an attack of fear. Get this now. When my faith, now, when my faith is established, it is the only thing that can actually defeat the spirit of fear completely. So our faith is established for our anticipation of an attack of fear by meditating on what God has said to us. When you open your Bibles, when we open our Bibles, we need to we need to read it, but we need to think about what God is saying. We need to focus in on what God is saying. We need to concentrate. We need to really keep it in our heads and keep 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 bringing it forth and, and looking for the meaning and getting an understanding and meditating and concentrating on exactly what the Holy Spirit instructs us to do at that moment. Now get this in the Spirit. When fear comes, when the spirit of fear comes, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom at that moment. The Holy Spirit will call, call back to our remembrance. God is not giving the spirit of fear. God is giving the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. God's not giving me the spirit of fear. And the more I say that, the more I stand in that, the more I focus in on that, the more I have victory, the more fear is defeated. Now, remember, fear doesn't, doesn't just leave. It's going to find a, try and find another avenue. So you got to have these little arsenals. I'm going to give you some scriptures that you're going to be able to keep and you're going to be able to stand on, but you need an arsenal that will really fight this fear in this season. We all are, are people of faith. And our faith in God should change things. But we have to be ready to come back fear because we're in a war right now. We're in a spiritual war and we must get victory. Uh, so, 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 so our faith is established for an attack or for the attack of fear to effectively fight the spirit of fear. It, 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 How is it established? It's established by meditating. And I know, and you know, I keep giving it to you over and over again because I want you to have this. Concentrating on exactly what the Holy Spirit instructs us to do at that moment. When fear comes, the Holy Spirit is already ready for fear. It's all, it's like he's already in place in our lives to help us to overcome fear. Uh, so so when, 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 when fear approaches us, 
we, 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 must, we must immediately yield to the power and the instructions of the Holy Spirit. We must immediately yield to the, to the power and the instructions of the Holy Spirit. That's important. Now, now, remember this, when fear approaches, when it comes and it, you, know, you begin to become a little anxious and a little bit upset and a little bit afraid, we must immediately yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. Immediately. You don't have any time to waste. Don't meditate on you know, what you see, what you're thinking. Don't even do that. Just get right back on God's word and let it do what it does. The Holy Spirit is not going to encourage us to get angry. The Holy Spirit is not going to encourage us to fight. The Holy Spirit is not, the Spirit is not going to encourage us to be using profanity. It's not going to encourage us to get into a mindset of rage and revenge and anger and bitterness. No. No, because you know, sometimes fear can be very intimidating. It can really alter your personality and send you in a place where you really don't want to be. So, so what the Holy Spirit does is this. The Holy Spirit, he's going to put the word of God in our mouths. He's going to, he's, this is, this is, he's not going to, if you, if you get in this place where you, where you're getting angry, you want to fight, you're using profanity, you're upset, fear has, fear has, has managed to get in. Fear, but listen, it's not too late. You want to recover. Once you realize it's gotten in, recover as quick as you can. Don't worry about somebody when they say, you just got through cussing, now you're praying, time to pray. If you, <laughs> here it is. If you, <laughs> but you have to do that. You have to, you have to really just stay on. You have to realize I'm in a war right now. It's like, okay. Sometimes you know you get hit, but as soon as you can recover, recover. So don't let people tell you when you don't need to be praying after you said all you can say. No, you need to be praying because <laughs> God, because God is real and so is the enemy. So get this: the Holy Spirit lives in us to help us have the victory over ungodly spirits. The Holy Spirit is the fighter of ungodly. Fear is an ungodly spirit. It also gives us power and authority over our own flesh, which which leans to fear, which which conjures up all the interaction with fear. We must learn to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us during times of fear. We, 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 you can't do it on your own. Man can You can call somebody for support, and they can give you the worst testimony you've heard in your entire life. You have to really be able to rely on the Holy Spirit, and that is a prayer without ceasing, a continuous interaction with the Holy Spirit and talking to the Holy Spirit and talking through the Holy Spirit to the Father. So we have to be able to rely on the Holy Spirit. Now, we have to know that it's the Holy Spirit and we have to yield to the Holy Spirit. You know, Satan will make himself an angel of light. You know, and he can, he can always sort of duplicate the word of God, but the Holy Spirit comes with power. It comes with power. So when you yield to the Holy Spirit, he literally takes over and he takes our mind and our hearts and our thought patterns into a new direction. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can do that. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave us Brothers and sisters, when fear comes, because fear is very dangerous. So when fear comes, the Holy Spirit is not going to leave us. What he's going to do is he's going to shift us into a new direction. He's going to take our minds into a place of peace, a place of serenity, a place of comfort, a place of security. The Holy Spirit will do that. Uh, so, so the Holy Spirit will always lead us back or bring us back to the, to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit lives in us to help us have the victory over ungodly spirits. We must learn to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us, especially in this trying time. Fear is very, very dangerous and should not be underestimated. Fear is designed to get one in agreement with it, with the circumstances, what you see, so that it can consume your life, so that it can alter your thought patterns, so it can alter your lifestyle, so it can cause you to go into this place that you don't even recognize yourself. So you have to openly rebuke fear. You have to acknowledge that, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to receive this spirit. You don't have to receive the spirit of fear. It does not come from God. Fear, I say this to you again, I, I keep repeating things because I need you to hear this. This is going to help you. Fear is dangerous. Get this now. Should not be underestimated. Fear is designed to get one in agreement so it can consume one's life by causing their fears to become their reality. Job chapter 3 verse 25 says this. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I, which, which I was afraid of is come, come unto me. So, so hear this, and, and so, so hear this by the Spirit of God. God has not given us a spirit of fear. We're not subject to it. We don't have to yield to it, but it's, it, it comes. It continuously comes. So we have to fight against it. We have to literally like fight against it. We have to relax, calm down, get our mind together, walk away from the situation, walk away from the circumstances, and, and say these exact words, God, this, this is not of you. 
I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I surrender to you. That is why we must have, have readily and available consistency. We must, we must have, we, we, we must have rel- readily and, 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 and available consistently the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. But what God has given me is this, power, that's dudamus, that's the power of God to overcome, to overcome, to overcome. God has given me the spirit of love, perfect love, cast it out fear, to cast it out. Sound mind, sound mind means to get my thoughts together, back on God, back on victory, back on life. I want to give you some scriptures now because I think it'll really help you because hear me, brothers and sisters, this is a trying time. And, and we must stand on, in and on the word of God, uh, regardless. Remember that, because if David says something that was amazing, he said, if I, if, I, if I go to hell, you're there. If I'm here, you're there. If I go to heaven, you're there. God is everywhere. And so when you're a believer and you have eternal life, then, then you, you don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, we, sh- we should not be afraid. We should be able to live and function and have our lives. And so you have to have the word, though, in order to live and function and have your life during a time like this. Uh, Psalms chapter 56, verse three says this, when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you, Lord. When I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven says this, be anxious, anxious, anxiousness is the fuel to fear. Anxiousness is the fuel to fear. When fear comes, fear is designed to really get you, to cause you to make a lot of mistakes. Anxiousness is is energy. So the Bible said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God for the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our mind is important. Psalms 34 verses 4 and 8. Four and eight, not four through eight, but four and eight. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Oh, taste and see that the Lord God is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge. We must hide ourselves in the Lord, in the Lord by the leading of the Holy Spirit, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. A very, in in, in, in John chapter 14, verse 27, this is what Jesus said as he was, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, that's eternal, eternal life talk. He's, you know, because he was telling them, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He said, don't allow the things you go through to cause your heart to be troubled. Because remember, you do have eternal life. This is not the end. Uh, so let me read that one again. This is Psalms 4, I mean, John chapter 14, St. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Psalms 46, verses 1 and 2. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should be removed, and though the mountains should slip into the heart of the sea, we will not be removed. We will not fear because God is able to secure us even now. Isaiah, and I'm giving you these scriptures because I know you need them. We all need them. We need the word to overcome this time. We need the word to function in this time, to live in this time, to keep thriving in this time, to keep believing God. We need God's word. It is our strength. It is the strength of God manifested in mankind, his word. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, do not fear. For Isaiah 41 and 10 says, do not fear, for I'm with you. Do not be anxiously looking around and about. What he, what he means in this scripture is don't, don't listen. Don't be looking for the, the negative news and what everybody else has got to say. You know, just really get in the word, put your concentration and your focus on God. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let me read all of Isaiah 41 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be anxiously, do not, do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will help uphold you with my righteousness in my right hand. Now I want to talk to you just a minute because the scripture actually says, don't be anxious. Anxiety, when, when fear comes in, then anxiety comes in. Anxiety is the energy of fear. Anxiety 
is 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 this. It means to oh, it, it means to it's the overthinking of a thing with the possibility of making it real. Sometimes you you know you hear these you you hear all these reports and and then you become afraid and then you get anxious and then you know just got trying to protect yourself and then they say you know you've allowed it in through fear. You've allowed it in. That's, that's the work of fear. Fear is to to make to bring into our lives the things that say not the, the money spirits want in our lives rather than the things that God wants in our lives. So so what we have to do is we have to we have to fight anxiety because when we get anxious, then then what it what it literally does is it, it gives us the energy to think in line with that that wants that wants to defeat us, that, that want to enter into our lives. So don't don't be anxious. You know, just just you know remember, so you know, sickness is not of God. If sickness was of God, then why would he send Jesus to heal us? Jesus, I, you know, and by his stripes, I'm healed. So, so sickness is not of God. Of course, when you're dealing with healing, you're talking about the soul, but also in the natural being, because we saw Jesus in, in the scriptures that he would go about healing all sickness and all disease. So I want you to consistently believe God that, that, you are, that you're healed. Please listen to me very carefully here, brothers and sisters. Preach the blood of Jesus, but but speak this by his stripes I'm healed. Now, this is what you're doing when you say that. You're putting in place a defense against sickness. You're putting in place a defense against by Jesus' stripes I am healed. What am I doing? I'm putting in place a defense against sickness. By the blood, listen. Now the blood of Jesus is really intended to cease death. You remember when 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 God told Israel, he said, look, kill this sacrificial lamb, take the blood, put it on your doorpost, and then I'm going to send death through. But when death come, come, come through, then, then you, you will be alive. You will, you will, your, your firstborn will be alive. The blood of Jesus, is, is, of course, it represents eternal life, but it also represents life in there. So plead the blood of Jesus over you, over your family. Plead the blood of Jesus over the people. Let's plead the blood of Jesus over these frontliners. Let's just plead the blood of Jesus. Now, the blood of Jesus works in believers' lives. The blood of Jesus works in believers' lives. So let's plead the blood of Jesus, and let's claim, let's claim daily, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Consistently claim it. Don't, don't back off of that. I want to talk to you a little bit more about anxiety, and then I'm done for the, for the name. Anxiety is the energy, is the energy of, of fear. Anxiety is the overthinking of a thing with the possibility of making it real. Real in mind, energizing the actual thoughts to manifest. So, so when it, when, when you, the more you think about something, the more you, you really is, you know, you're trying to get away from it, you're running from it, whatever it is, it can really have an effect on you. So you, you, you don't want to be anxious. Any, anytime you feel anxious because fear and anxiety runs together. So anytime you feel anxious, you want to let God know what you're going through. God, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little anxious. I really need you to help me to pull up out of this place. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything, you know, foolish. I don't want to allow anything in my life. I don't want to usher anything into my life. I need you to help me, Lord. And he'll do it. Uh, now, and I want to give you this because God gave it to me. Anxiety begins with a thought about, about something that you do not want to happen. I mean, fear does that, but anxiety gets in. Then it is magnified through, through the imagination. That's why scripture clearly say to, to Christian believers to take every thought into captivity. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says the weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We tear down arguments. And so there's a when you talk about the spiritual warfare of us being solid in Christ and everything that we're seeing, that's a battle. When you get in God's word and you hear God's word, then you're winning on God's side. But when you start looking at the negative reports and you start listening to everything negative and you allow ne negative things coming come into your environment and you pay attention to it, that's the battle, that's the war. So you have to make a decision on what you're gonna hear. You have to make a decision on what you're gonna hear and, and, and you have to go out to God with the same energy that you would go out to anything else, or even greater. But you have to make a decision on what you're gonna on what you're gonna hear. So we have to take every thought, brothers and sisters. This is this is the thing that is challenging me. I know that that during this season, you know, you can you can be doing well, you can be having good moments, 
But then there are, there are some deep challenges that are, that'll happen to you where your mind will go into another place. Hear me by the Spirit of God. We have the mind of Christ. You have to say that out of your own mouth. I have the mind of Christ. I have victory. I have victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Pick the blood of Jesus over your mind, over your thought patterns. Keep your mind in line with the word of God. How do I do that? Keep hearing the word of God. Keep hearing the word of God. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I, I, re I render it null and void in your lives and in your family life and in your environment in the name of Jesus Christ. And I do speak that God's given us the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. And that's what we have. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed. I, believe, I want you to believe God you're going to live and not die. I want you to believe God that you're going to be healthy and you ain't going to be sick. I want you to speak those things out of your mouth consistently. I thank God for you. But let me say this to you. You cannot effectively have the confidence that comes from the Holy Spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings confidence. It brings power. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't do it. Well, how do I get the Holy Spirit? Well, you got to accept Jesus Christ first. <laughs> you got to accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. And what does that mean? You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Remember, confession is not just I say Jesus is Lord. No, it's, it's believing everything about Christ, that he came through that virgin, that vir he came through a virgin's birth, that he lived a holy life, that he, that, he, that he went through the process and he gave his life for us. He went, he, he, was, he went on the cross, went in a grave, he was raised, and he see the right hand of the Father making intercession. Those things you have to believe in order to, that's a confession. You're confessing what you believe. You're confessing, you're, you're agreeing with God, I do believe. And then when you do that, then you have the victory in life. And then you ask, ask them to, to baptize the Holy Spirit. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you, if you are you saved? And if you, if you passed away, if you left right now, would you go to heaven? If you're not sure, say this prayer with me. Father God, forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, I need you. I need you to be my Lord. I need you to be my Savior. Please come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus. Now with my mouth, I confess, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. With my heart, Father God, I believe that you raised him from the dead. And Father God, I thank you for baptizing me in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, teach me the things of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, I, I, I pray God's blessings on you. I pray peace in your home and joy. And we'll, and, we'll, and we'll get back together again on Sunday. Be blessed in Jesus' name.